my velocity banking rules. Okay, you can take photos, write it down, or you can meet me in the back and I can send this spreadsheet, uh, send this presentation to you if you like as well. Rule number one is knowing your cash flow. I take that number, I times it by 12. Rule number two is we use Dave Ramsey's method of snowball as our measuring stick to determine whether this strategy actually makes sense or not, okay? Velocity banking has the ability to take someone's debt where let's say the original timeline, if we mapped it out the traditional way of paying off debt, which is simply making extra payments, right? Towards your maybe one debt at a time, the lowest debt, and then working your way up. Let's say that takes the average person 10 to 13 years to get out of debt. Velocity banking can do it in five to seven or less. That is a, that's a big gap, right? Mathematically, we can do that. So that's what we use our measuring, measuring stick, credit card, uh, rule number three. Credit cards can be used to pay bills to receive cash back rewards to offset your borrowing costs. I run a business. I spend roughly over a hundred plus thousand a year on expense costs. So that hundred plus thousand dollars that I'm running that I have to spend no matter what because I'm a good steward, I run it on a credit card. I get cash back rewards and points that total over six thousand dollars per year, maybe more, right? So. It was money I was gonna spend anyway. So let's say I spent 100 grand, I'm gonna spend 100 grand, I get six back. My net cost for the year is now $94,000. I just saved six grand for leveraging the banking products. Where obviously Uncle, uh, Grandpa Dave Ramsey would say that's stupid. I understand why he says it because someone who is not a good steward spends that same 100 grand and doesn't pay it back and now you're paying 25% in interest, not right. cute. Okay. Rule number four is I only leverage up to roughly about 66% of my debt tool, my line of credit. I don't leverage the whole thing. I get 10 grand, I'm not spending the 10. Okay. The only reason why I would abuse this rule is if my cash flow times 12 in a year is greater than this number. Right? Because if we're going to leverage debt to pay off debt, you need to use more capital than what you actually have in cash flow per month, right? Now here's a good example here. If I had $10,000 of cash on hand and I wanna use it to pay off debt, right? Versus the person that has 10,000 of cash flow in a year and divide that number by 10. Whatever the number is, let me, uh, what's that number, 10,000 divided by 12? Six, seven, let's see, 10,000 divided by 12, 833. So the person that pays $833 per month towards their debt versus the person that takes 10K in one shot and pays the debt off, they're actually gonna go faster. They're paying less interest up front. Whereas the person that goes month by month by month by month by month, you're, you're continuously paying that interest, so you're getting hurt. Yeah. Your, your cash is, is dying slowly instead of being used effectively. So those are my rules. Rule number five was, was know your numbers and solve for cash flow. Oftentimes we're told to pay off our debt by going to the smallest balance and then working your way up. In Velocity Banking, we look at cash flow. Cash flow first, interest savings second, the balance of the debt third. The more cash flow you have, the faster you're gonna go. So if you have a debt that you owe $2,000 on a credit card at 0%, and then you have a car note that you have a $5,000 balance on, and it's $500 a month, and the interest rate is 6.99%, you're told to pay off the two first, and then go to the car. But that's not costing you any interest. So you pay the monthly minimum, monthly minimum, monthly minimum, and then you drive your cash flow to the car and get that 500 a month, and by the time that's paid off, by the time this card expires, you have the cash flow to eliminate that to avoid the interest. Pretty cool stuff. So in Velocity Banking, we're trying to determine, okay, what is that lump sum amount of money that I'm gonna pull from my line of credit, HELOC, credit card, personal line of credit, to say consolidate, it's kind of like what we're doing. We're kind of consolidating these high interest debts, putting them in a zero to very low interest rate environment on these debt tools, 
right? And this is what these, uh, the Australian people do over there with their mortgages and stuff. So I take the two, cash flow times 12, 66% of the line of credit, you're gonna get a chunk range. So it might be between 12,000 and 25,000, right? Depending on what your income is. And that's gonna help us determine, okay, here is our chunk amount, we got our numbers, now here's what I'm gonna do to attack debt, right? Here's how I'm gonna eliminate debts. Or the, the reverse. You say, okay, this is how much cash flow I'm producing in a year, this is how much leverage I have available that I you know, don't wanna breach, and I'm going to invest in starting a crypto trading business, let's just say. And then that projects to do double, triple, quadruple, like you're, you're trying to project a rate of return or maybe you start your own business, your own coaching, consulting practice, become an influencer, whatever it is, right? You're getting involved in those different things. So you're either using the concept to pay off debt or increase your income, increase cash flow, okay? Here's how you calculate the cost. This is where we're getting into the nitty gritty now. This is nitty gritty, nitty gritty stuff. This right here is how you can potentially jump where you are currently at today. Because you are being literally pushed down financially by the interest that you guys are paying on your debts. And even the interest that you don't even know that you're paying, which is called inflation. And there's ways to offset that as well. So check this out. In order to calculate the cost of borrowing, you have simple interest debt, you have amortized debt. Most of us here in this room have amortized debt. The interest is charged up front, up front in advance. That is how you're getting eaten alive by your cash flow, making those monthly payments. In the velocity banking world, in our lines of credits, we're charged simple interest. It actually takes time for the money to charge you interest. It takes time for interest to accrue. So if I avoid that from ever happening, I cancel the interest. And then I take that same capital and I pay off this debt over here that was charging me interest and I reroute that cash flow and payments back to my line of credit that is not charging me interest or very little. Ooh, so here's how you do. You take the balance of our line of credit, whatever it is, you times it by the interest rate. You then divide that number by 365. That is what's called your uh, APR, your annual percentage rate is this number right here, your annual percentage rate. And then it'll say like your average daily rate is gonna be that number right here. And it'll probably be a couple dollars a day. So instead of paying hundreds of dollars in a month, you could be paying a couple of dollars, a couple of cents in a day to offset your borrowing costs. So now we're using debt to pay off debt, to recover cash flow, to put me in a healthier financial position, to then be able to have my ears wide open to what a Jessica is saying and other people are saying about yes. making money. Yes. And then I can say, okay, I'm ready for that. I can, I can invest in here because I have been a good steward over the resources that I do have, that I have been operating in, okay? The next thing, once, once we've uh, made our chunk, whatever it is, there's three numbers that you're gonna wanna get to determine your monthly cost. The first thing was getting your daily cost, right? So what's actually happening is when I take money out of my line of credit to let's say pay off a debt, or I'm gonna pay off my mortgage. Well then in your mind you're probably thinking, well Denzel, all I did was take money from that debt and I put it into this line so I still owe the same amount of money, right Denzel? Yes, you still owe the same amount of money. All we did was eliminate a big portion of the interest. So now you're wondering, well, how do I pay off the line? I still, have to, I still have to make a monthly payment on my car and monthly payment on this and on that. And now I have a new monthly payment on the line of credit. She's like, Denzel, what are you, what are you getting me into? This sounds like a, you know, whoa, this is weird, right? So what's happening is just like you have a checking account, every one of us have a checking account in here. And all that account does is receive money and then money goes out. That's all it does, right? Well, our line of credit, or AKA our debt tool, can do the same thing. With a HELOC, with a line of credit, and in some cases, a credit card, you can actually dump your whole entire paycheck into the line of credit. 100% of that paycheck is now principal that just paid down the line. That same money can be used again to pay your bills. 
So we took a chunk of money out of here, and let's say we paid off three debts, so you are no longer making payments to those three debts. You are no longer paying interest on those three debts. Those debts are now in here. And because we're dumping our whole entire income into the line, you literally cancel whatever the daily rate is from accruing. Right? You're still gonna get charged interest, but way less than what you was paying over here. right? And that's how we do the math. So what happens is now you owe money on the line, agreed? You took money out of the line, now you owe money on the line. So how do you pay it off? By dumping all your income in, right? And then you take your expenses out, which are now what? Less, less money's coming out because you just eliminated those payments, right? Agreed, you got the cash flow. So now you're just dealing with whatever the interest cost is on that line. So in order to do that, you take the, you take the highest balance owed on the line, you take the lowest balance, right? So you're gonna have, let's say we owe $20,000 on a line, you took 20 grand, you paid off three debts, you got cash flow, you now owe 20 on the line. So you're gonna times 20K by the interest rate of the debt tool, whatever it is, divide by 365, you get a rate. Cool, write that number down. Then you say, okay, I make $6,000 a month. So 6K is going in, in a month, that number, so 20K minus six is 14. Take that number, times it by interest rate, divide by 365, you get your daily rate. And then there's the ending balance. At the end of the month, when all bills came out, all expenses came out, guess what? You're left with that ending balance. Maybe it goes up to uh, 18,000 if you're cash flowing 2,000 a month, or maybe you're cash flowing 1,500 bucks a month, so it's 18,500, whatever it is. But now you've only paid a couple of dollars in interest as opposed to the hundreds of dollars.